Hey coach, so excited you found us on YouTube. Let me help you through this great journey we call coaching. I've done this for 30 years. You can see won a lot of championships, won a lot of basketballs, but let me help you through this journey. Go over and click above, click down below at teachhoops.com and we will help you through this. One-on-one -on -one calls, office hours, more resources than I can even describe. So go over and check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. Enjoy the video. How are you? No, oh, I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you not hear yes. me? Still? Now I can. Now I can. I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear you before your mouth was moving. But I oh, I can't right, hear okay. you. That's all yeah, right. I had, I had football practice, so I had to run down real quick. Sorry, I was late. Oh God! Where? Remind me what state you're in. Arizona. And you have football practice? Yeah, passing league stuff. Uh, you've been out of school for a while. Yeah, yeah, we've we've been out uh, two weeks now, two and a half. Oh, we start finals. We start finals tomorrow. Oh goodness. Oh yeah, yeah. I can't have contact with my guys for at least another week. Oh shoot, we've been practicing since the last week of school. We're, we're in Arizona. You can go year round. Oh my god. Yeah, so we we were in a spring league starting in April. So. So we're in we're in Arizona. Uh, we're just down the interstate from Tucson. Okay. I've been to um my my aunt has a place in Sunrise Sunrise Sun something summertime um, place. Is it in the Phoenix but, area? Yeah, it's in the Phoenix okay. area. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's nice. Yeah, I I'd miss water though. Do you did you get to see any water ever? Yeah, you know our state's pretty diverse. So I used to live up in the mountains actually. Okay. So, yeah, I mean we got desert, we got mountains, we got whatever you want. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. All right. You don't have minus forty like we do in. Uh, no, no, in we don't have that. We don't have that. No. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Shoot away, coach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, so I think the main thing I want to start with um, and ask you about was uh, zone offense. Um, I, I, uh, I heard an interview with uh, Gene Durden that you had on uh, yep. your podcast, yep. and he really talked about how he just works, uh, really focuses on the high-low relationship. And I feel like every zone offense is going to be some sort of high-low. Against yep. the two three, against the two three specifically. Yeah, I, so there's a couple of things I've changed. I we still we run the re, we run the read and react against it. I really? love the I love the high low. Okay. Um, so I have a couple counters that I can run that also work, but I think what people don't do against zones is they don't dribble penetrate. Because yep. they're scared to. Um, so we have we have started to do that more and been really successful at dribble penetration, kind of trying to skip and dribble penetrate. Sure. Um, cause a lot of people will screen. A lot of people will do skips and stuff. Um, what happens with the zone is when you dribble it, it, it like collapses on itself. Right. Okay. Um, even, even more so than in a man. And then, then we're getting better outside looks. Um, so yes, I love the high low. We can't always make that initial entry into the high to get the high low. Right. <laughs> Gene and I never got into that. It's like, I love the high-low, but my my high guy sometimes has to go all the way to the three-point line to even get the ball. Right. Um, unless he's pinning. So, you know, if we get some movement, otherwise we we have some success with it. But what we've been doing is trying to overload and then kick and dribble penetrate. And then, because that kind of reads into that read and react. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, we run read and react. Um uh, okay. Obviously, we kind of took your rules and modified it. Just so we even simplified it a little bit more than you simplified it. <laughs> and uh, but our kids are getting really good at it, and we're kind of getting an identity. You know, we always start with the double down screens, and we're starting to get good at it. But with zone offense, I feel like I've given them no identity, and I don't do a good job of coaching the details. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. So it, that's what I want. I want. Details. So I think you got to So that, that's a that's a great that, that I just wrote a note to myself. That's a great thing because I think what you have to do is take the key components that you have for man, and then just say okay. So what's what's our number one thing we want to get on against the zone? Maybe maybe you've got a good shooting team, so then you want to get a pin and a skip. Or maybe you want to get dribble – maybe we want to get quick rotations and dribble penetration. Yeah. So I think what you got to do is go back to your list and look at your team and figure out, just like you have layers for the man, mm -hmm. you're not going to dump all those layers, but here's our point. Because my guys are really good at two of the layers. And then we have to really work on any everything. You know, they'll all cut to the basket and they'll do a couple things. It's it's the that's why he, I love that he calls them layers because that you got to get better at more than a couple of them. I mean, right. I can give you a I can give you like a couple of zone offenses that we run with that have sets and stuff, um, but we use those more for quick hitters, right? 
than we do for a continuity. Right. Um, you know, we run an overload. We run like a um, kind of a flash through. We, you know, we run a couple of different things, but I use them more like quick hitters than I do a, an offense. Right. Um, what do you guys tend to see? First of all, get shooters. You don't have to worry about a zone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, out of the two, three, uh, I think right now as a program, like our kids kind of, they kind of dread when we see a two, three. If we see man, I think we're looking our chops. When we see that two, three, because we like to attack the basket. I mean, okay. the, we spot five out, we space, we come off those screens. Uh, and then when we get zoned, it's just counterintuitive to everything we practice. Okay, you know, so then, so, the so this is where the psychologist of you has to come out, I think. Because, I, I mean, this is from a guy that never saw a shot he didn't like when I played collegiately. Or co I mean, I shot every – I mean, if I was open, it went up. Sure. And they have to get the mentality that if they're zoning, we're going to get better looks. Right. That's the thing is your guys probably want to dribble t attack more than they want to shoot. Yeah. Um, so this is the time that you have to say, people are going to zone us. Do you want to score? Every kid wants to score, right? So this is when they got to pay the price right now is they got to get – you got to be able to hit some threes. Yeah. That, that's the key. I mean, if, if, if your team is a team that – because I've had these kind of teams that want to get to the rack, they want to get to the six-footer. Well, I'm going to just – I'm going to play pack and I'm going to collapse on you and give you outsides. Well, tell your guys that that's great. That's what they're going to do, and then we're going to hit three. I mean, but they got to get in the gym, and I don't know if you can do that or not, or they will, but – Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I got guys. We shoot. We get in the gym. We, hit, we got our shooting machine all that. Okay. I just – I didn't want to live and die by it. And, and most importantly, Coach, I guess what I'm talking about is with the Read and React, I like putting it in with our eighth graders all the way up. And it's really taught them how to play basketball. And yep. now with our varsity, we're starting to get good. So now we can run more sets. And we do that thing because they got that down. Yep. Uh, with our zone, I want something where, okay, this is what we do as a program. We run it from freshman up. And then I can add my quick hitters to it. Okay. And it doesn't have to be high-low. But if it is a high-low, I want to be really good at teaching it. If it is um, – if it is – Green react against the zone. I want to be really good. Are at you only going to see two threes? Um, you know, against against odd fronts, I like to go. We call it five on a dice, so we just go two guys in the corners, two guys up top, and one high post, and then okay, we have rules out of that. So that's okay. usually what we run against odd fronts. So why wouldn't you run like a? Why wouldn't you run? Uh, the, the rule of thumb is even front odd front, like even zone yeah. odd front. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So why don't you run like a one three one? Do you got a kid that can run the baseline and work short corner? So that's that's what I mean when we go high low. You know, we'll do a one three one. And, okay. and whether it's whether it's a guy flashing the high post and one going short corner, baseline corner. You know, right. Uh, no matter what, it's some sort of one three one. Okay. Always the zone. It's just I feel like even when I get us into it and our exit nose look good, we still whether maybe we just don't practice the shots we're getting in practice. You know, maybe we don't practice that short corner shot or or the little details of how do I seal. If the ball goes to high post, what do I do as a, as a uh, short corner guy? Right. So, so the, the, my guess is you don't spend as much time in practice by just what you just said. <laughs> well, yeah, we run a lot of – we're a man-to-man -man team. So we right. spend a lot of time on man-to-man, -man and we're not – I don't think I'm good at coaching zone offense is what I'm really getting at. But are you good at coaching a zone defense? Probably not. No, I mean, we run a little 1-3-1, one, one, okay. but I would say probably not. So, so, so I think you have to start running a little zone defensively too. Okay. Um, and, and here's – trust me, I'm in Wisconsin with Bennett's – the Bennett's and yeah, – trust yeah. me, we are, we are man – this is a man state, trust me. It's like red and blue. This is a man state. People want to play man. But I think you can use that zone to rest people. You can do it to change up. Right. Um, so I, that's where I'm going to challenge you. I think you got to become – because if you play a little zone in practice, then you're going to be working on your zone offense at the same yeah. time. Yeah. I probably play 80% man. But I got to work on my matchup 2-3. I got to work on my 1-3-1 one, one in practice. So when I do, then I'm also working on my offense. Yeah. Um, so that's what I would – and the thing is, it's just uh, – what I, it's a momentum killer. Like, I, like my podcast from Monday about tempo. When somebody gets good tempo, yeah. I just want to change it just a little bit to get them out. For, and that's where if you throw them a zone – you know, my guess is I haven't seen your team, but if your guys like to get to the rack, they'd be a good 1-3-1 one, one team. Right. Wait, I, okay. And that's, and that's kind of what I settled on. I really like the one through one stuff. And there's so many ways to get into it. Um, but if the biggest, we're ever going to be a six, one, six, two in the next four years, we're not going to be too big. Uh, so, and so when teams okay. have a big, you know, six, five, six, six guys standing in front of the rim, we kind of struggle a little bit when we're that, running. That one, three, one's hard against that. I would agree. So, yeah. 
So I would do like I would do like a two three and just trap it anytime it goes low and try to keep them. So that means you got three guys down below. Right. Um, and this is going to be counter to what I just told you. But if I have, if I knew I was going to have a team like that for the next, few, I'd work on running and jumping. I I literally like I'm coming at you as soon as you get off the bus. I'm coming at you, and I'm going to run and jump you, and I'm going to because I want that big guy to have to get up and down the court. And so you right. what you get layup once in a while. I'm going to turn you over. Um, so if you got athletes and you're small, run and jump at them. I mean, okay. come at them. Work on rotations. Work on because it's you, it's not predictable. Like it's not like me running a diamond in one full court against you. You can right. kind of say, hey, here's we're going to try to get in the middle. We're going to try to flash. If I'm running and jumping at you and the kids get good at it, it, it it's not predictable. You don't you you kind of know where they're going to run at us and trap us. Right. Um, so it's counter to what I just said about playing some zone. <laughs> but if you're going to be small and you're going to be athletic, I'd come at people. Okay. Um, and that, that will take care of part of the zone thing, too. My guess is is a little bit of a tempo thing, too, that people are trying to slow you by zoning. Yeah, I mean, it definitely does. I, I as You know, if we don't – if we get a rebound, we're kicking it up and we're going. But, you know, if the ball goes through the hoop, I like – I slow it down. We're going to get in a set. We're going to run our stuff. You know, so it definitely slows us down for sure. And why do you do that after a make? Because then I'm then they're running back and getting in their zone, right? Yeah, I just um, I guess my thought is, coach. Um, I guess the bad teams we can always get it and push it. The good teams get back though, regardless. You know, we had a really really good zone team in our conference. Uh, they had a six ten kid that's going to ASU. Okay. And they always got back. I mean, and they, you couldn't get you couldn't get up a three before you get back, before they could set we, up. No, we can get up a three. Oh, we can get up a three, coach. Okay. Uh, I just you know at some point when you're down, you know, it just. Is that really – we can always get that look. Even in our offense, no matter what, we can always get that wide And can open. you make that look? That's, that's the thing. I don't want to live and die off of it. You know, okay. I think – Because the game – trust me, I'm an old I'm – I'm an old dog. Trust me. I get it. Yeah. But the game's changing. That three is – I mean, when you look at the stats, and I'm a stats teacher, you look at the stats, it's all threes and all six-footers and in. Right. I mean, it is. Yeah. So, it's like – the way you get them out of that zone is you hit some threes on them and they will, you, you come down and hit pop a couple threes on them. They're out of it. Right. I mean, I don't know. You, you would know what's happened over during the season. No, no, no. You're hundred percent correct. Coach. It's just, it's uh, it, when we don't hit them, you know, bad teams play with us, you know what I mean? And, and they do, but then that's where you can turn the bad teams over. Okay. What I'm saying is you can turn the bad teams over. You can like, you can come at them, whatever you miss some threes, you know, that's fine. You're, you, if you're a good enough shooting team and you're in that effective field goal percentage where you need to be, that's fine. We're going to turn you over. We're going right. to we're going to get at you at a pace where we're going to beat you. So we're not even talking about the bad teams because one out of a hundred they'll beat you. The, the, it, it, it's a little bit of a control issue, and it's hard for me. Trust me. <laughs> um, and and I've been able to do it a little bit more because I have a son that's coming up and he can, sh I mean, he's going to be seen, he can shoot. So I've given a little bit more leeway than I ever have as far as threes go. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, this isn't answering your question as far as the zone thing, but I think that, I think if you can get the ball up and get some quick looks, um, because what happens when you slow it up? Let me ask that question. That's a better question. What happens when you do, they make it and you walk it up? What's the outcome then? Uh, typically, are you saying like percentage wise? Or? Yeah, or well, I mean, what do you feel happens? Do you feel your do you, is your effective field goal percentage lower or higher? Um, you know, like I said, I feel like you know I like to kick it up. We we can get that three anytime we want. So I started. You know what? We gotta we gotta grind it a little bit. We gotta if we're gonna okay. be if we can get over that hump. We got to grind it. So we might as well. And you're going to have to grind it to beat the big boys. I agree. Yeah. It's going to yeah, be 48, so 42. Yeah, I agree. And, and so I guess that actually kind of jumps me down a few questions too. Okay. Because uh, we're kind of getting that philosophical. So I'm going to have athletes, but I know this. So in Arizona, we have private schools um, out of Phoenix and they play down with like, we're a 400 kid school. So okay. we're a small school, but the okay. private schools will play down and, they're always going to have better athletes and not that we can't compete. Of course we can compete, but if I'm looking philosophically, okay, at some point we're not going to have the best athletes, you know, in my region. Sure. But so does that mean I still, because we were high pressure on the line, up the line, you know, we were coming out and pressuring the ball, doing all those things. Then I you saw playing pack, you playing pack or are you just pressuring? 
no, no, we are pressure enforcing baseline, no pack. Um, you know, we're still getting to the tape line, but, um, you know, just high pressure man to man. And so I started thinking, okay, if we're not going to be the best athletes eventually, do we really want to play pack and do we want to slow tempo down? And do we want to be more like a, a football team that comes down and we call our stuff? You know what I mean? Right. I'm not sure. That's where I'm, my philosophical question is at what point, you know, is, is trying to out. So, what, so, so no, th- those are legit. So, um, can you, can you in the next four years win your conference? Yeah. Yeah. We got, uh, we have a really special group coming up. Uh, okay. really special young guys. Yeah. Okay. So you, so, yeah. so yes. So then explain the levels in Arizona. So it's. Yeah. So, uh, we actually have uh one, a through, uh, what is it? Six a now. Okay. Uh, and so six, a being the biggest, we're about a two a. Um, so, uh, if that makes any, is yeah, that, no, that, that makes sense. But I'm just talking about tournament trail. You oh, play, oh. You play in your, you play in your, how does it work? You play, you play in your conference, which is almost like your County. Uh, okay. And then as soon as you go to state, it's all PowerPoints. So you can match up against anyone in the state based on PowerPoints. Okay. But who do you have to, who do you have to beat to get to state? Uh, well, that's what I'm saying is, uh, so. Do you have to beat your teams in your conference or do you got to beat somebody outside you your conference? You got to beat the teams on your schedule because every game matters. So they take PowerPoints at the end of the year. Uh, yeah. So it's just about how many games you win and strength to schedule. And then that seeds you for state. Okay. And I don't, getting in really won't be tough, coach. Um, we weren't very good the last two years and we, we almost got in last year. So I'm not too worried about that. I guess I'm looking forward two years from now. I mean, this year we're still going to be really good. No, no, no. So, so, so that, that makes sense. So you think, you think legitimate you got a shot to get the state. In the next yeah, game. we okay. got to beat the private schools. That's what's going to be. So, you, so, so to win it, you're going to have to. If you're not as good, yeah. you're going to have to grind them. Yeah, you're that's gonna, that's kind of my philosophy. Yeah. That's what I've noticed is that those teams that don't have the best athletes can grind you, and that's how you're going to overcome it. But and you, and, but you're gonna, but you got to convince the boys of that too. It's like right. against these teams. The, so here's what here's the way I've worked it in the past too is, you know, we look at our schedule and we go, all right, this that's where they got to make the shift too, like. This team, we can run. We can go. We can work on our run and jump. This team, we're going to have to grind. You know, that's where you got to go. You maybe got to go get some 2A teams on your roster, on your schedule. Like, you're you're a you're what 4A you said? No, no, 2A. So you're saying go get a bigger school on our schedule. Go get a bigger school. You need to go get some. First of all, if you lose, it won't hurt as much because power Mm -hmm. rankings. And second of all, if you win, it helps. And third, it teaches them. It's a reason we travel like we're going to we're going we, we've traveled the national tournaments all over. We can compete because I tend to have athletes and we'll outgrind you like, you know, there's guys that, you know, that who's the who's the big kid from um, North Carolina, um, white kid that wore, had the beard this year. Yeah, I know, I know exactly. It's not May, is it? It's May. We yeah. beat him. Oh, OK. In, in, in Myrtle Beach. We had no rights beating him. Now, we did have a we did have a. Um, you know, we had a, a Division One kid that's playing overseas, and we also had a Division One football player. But we, uh, we only reason we beat him is we were, we we were able to grind him. Right. <laughs> we we couldn't let him dominate the game. I think he was a freshman or sophomore. When we beat him, but that that's the only reason. That was a national tournament. You know, um, the kid from North Carolina that got drafted. Um, uh, uh, the the kid, the white kid that could dunk. Um, from Duke. From two oh, um, uh, Grayson Allen. Grayson yeah, Allen's yeah, team yeah, won that yeah, tournament. Yeah. So the, the, these people were, they were legit. Right, this, right. It was, this thing was legit. But the only reason we were even competing in that tournament is we were able to grind because they were better than us. We had good players. So that's what you got to like, okay, you got to go get on your schedule a couple of those teams. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then if you do that, then it's like, all right, they'll, they'll, they'll listen on those ones too because there's a little bit of fear. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, no, no, I got you, coach. And they'll, yeah. and they'll grind at that point. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, so that's what I would do. And so I, I feel comfortable doing that. I feel like defensively, uh, you know, at our level, Coach Smaller, you definitely – there's a handful of really good coaches. And that yep. I look – but for the most part, at a small school level, um, the, it's, not, it's not great. So I really feel like we could play defensively. Our man-to-man is going to be – And I think you should push baseline like you're doing, but I think you should trap on that baseline sometimes. Well – and that was kind of – so me and my staff really looked at, okay, do we still want to push baseline or do we want to go straight pack line because we don't see great athletes that are going to drive and kick it, you know, back the way they came or anything like that. So we started experimenting in the spring trying to push middle and seeing 
what difference there was. And so when I did the, st uh, the statistics with our team coach, whenever we pushed baseline, we had trouble. We had a kid sitting on the helpline, and we had trouble getting over there and, and taking a charge or getting a trap. You know what I mean? Okay. That was a yep. helpful stop for teams when they drove baseline. Right. But when they drove middle, even when we were trying to take away middle, they weren't good at scoring it because no one would shoot the pull-up jumper. You know, no, no kid shoots it. And so I'm like, well, let's try pushing middle. I mean, let's see how it goes. Not, not that we want to force them that way. We can still let it go baseline and, and double rotate, you know, rotate. Right. Well, the thing is, I think you could do both. I mean, we yes, have both. That's we kind of what we're doing. Yes. Yeah, we yeah. have a baseline push where, right. where they know, and they'll get, to, they'll get both rotations because they know they get into steal, right? right? So they'll push them to that baseline. Yeah. And that first one's good, but the second drop is always the hard one. Right, the help and, the helper drop. Yeah. And, and they'll get there because they know that's their steal. That's a steal, yeah. And so we still do that, but we want to sit in the gap and push them middle right into the gap because we just don't see knockdown shooters. We don't see that high level of talent at our level. And if we play good team defense, I think we're solid. Okay. So that's kind of where I came with you, the zone thing, because it's like, man, our defense is so good. But then – But you might – but you might – I mean – Virginia was off offensively too. I mean, I'm just saying, I think you got to hang your hat on that. And then, I mean, basically you got to get them in shooting. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> no, I'm, 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 whatever you have to do to get yeah. them into the gym, just to take shots. It's like, it's all up here. Right. Um, I think that's I a key to, thing. As a young coach, I just want to make sure my X's and O's were good because yeah. I mean, like, like I said, I feel like we really struggled on the zone in. And part of that, we weren't, we weren't good, you know, but um, as we're getting better and we're good now, we still kind of struggle. With so it. Maybe so I'm going to give you some homework too. I'm going to give you some homework on, I want you to, uh, and I'll look at them, send them to me and I'll look at them, come up with some like layers for your zone offense. And okay. I mean, I, I'll send you my, I'll send you my stuff. Yeah. I'd love that. The, the structured stuff, which is fine, but I don't mm -hmm. think for having talked to you, I don't think that's the way you want to go. I don't think you want to run. It's just too easy to defend, I think. Right. Use it as a quick hitter or something. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and get some scoring out of, and I've said this on my podcast a billion times, get scoring out of some quick hitters. Get scoring out of out-of-bounds plays, side out-of-bounds. Those are some places that you can steal some points. So can what, you? Coach, what percentage of, of offensive possessions should be a quick hitter or a set versus your continuity offense? So I do it after a timeout. I we when we ha we play halves now. So when we had quarters, we'd always come out of a quarter. We'd mm -hmm. always run something. It's um, whenever we need a momentum shift, it slows them down. Um, so we'll run one then. Uh, percentage wise, probably twenty percent. Okay. And my my assistants would want it closer to ten, probably. <laughs> um, why, why I probably is they think I can try. They, they they don't think. Well, we charted it. We don't score as effectively out of our quick hitters as we do out of our offense. Huh. Um. We just don't. We don't. We don't probably spend as much time executing them in practice. Um. Right. I and <laughs> Coach Morgan, if you're listening, I probably have too many of them. So, uh, you know, I'll call one of the colors, and you know, it's one of seven colors. Well we'd probably be better off running two colors and running them well. Um, but they all, so what we've done as a staff is we won't put anything new in if we already have something that does it. Okay. So if I'm running a high, like you were just talking about high, low, if we've got a quick hitter that runs a high, low, we won't put another one in that does a high, low. Um, because we've already got that covered. If that's something we can exploit because right. in high school, if you find something, you can keep going to it over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, okay. so that's been hard for me as an old dog, even that, you know, I'll have this play I've run for 10 years and it works, but we have another play that we run better. Um, so we have to get rid of it kind of thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I'd say, I'd say anywhere I, I would try to be attended to the 15% range as far as quick hitters. We don't spend as much time on out of bounds plays as we should either. I'm going to try to do a better job of that. So, um, I've, I've always, uh, we've mainly done continuity stuff. Uh, you, I think you said you do whatever your high school coach did. So when I came in, I did exactly what my high school coach did. You know what I mean? Just naturally. And that right. was always five out, no, no post, you know, open. Uh, I think Bobby, Bobby Huggins stuff. But um, I had, I had kind of talked to another coach out of Phoenix. Um, that was a big time guy. And he's like, 
I run no continuity stuff. I run, and he's got the best players. So, I mean, it's different than us. But he says, here's my 25 sets, and I insert them in this order, blah, blah, blah. And that was overwhelming to me. It was, like, shocking. And not that I wanted to do that. But then when I watch, you know, you always talk about Brad Stevens. When I watch his old tape, they run a lot. I mean, he's like a quarterback calling sets out there. So I have no – that's so foreign to me. I have no right. idea. How the problem that. is you, maybe you can do it better than I can. Like, I literally have not been in a gym with yeah. my guys since March. Okay. And I won't – and I'll be in with her for full five weeks, four weeks, five weeks, and then I won't be able to be in the gym with them until the season starts. Right. So I can't – Physi- I can't do it just because I don't have them enough. You think that, that they're able to execute just because of the amount of time they can spend with them? Yeah, it's like anything. I think it's a repetition thing. Right. It, okay. it, you know, you just got to be able to do it and, and, okay. and then show them. You got to do it and then show them. Um, but, you know, I used to run – when I had, my, when I had my, some of my NBA guys, we ran swing, flex. <laughs> so, it doesn't matter. If you got players, it don't matter what you're running. Right. Okay. <laughs> Well, I did I it to slow him down. Yeah. You know, I ran a structured offense. Like, he might be running all those sets just because yeah. he's got so much talent that he has to control them. Right. That was what I had to do. It's like, I got, like, guys that, like, will dunk over you and then just, you know. And I had to control them. Otherwise, they could, they could do that every time. So, I had to, like, slow them down. Okay. When you don't have as much talent anymore, like you and I maybe, then you right. got to give them more freedom because they, got, they, they can't create themselves stuff on their own. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that's, that that's, sense. that was kind of, yeah. I mean, that was my question is like, why do they do that? Cause I've never, it's so foreign to me, you know, to, to almost call a set nonstop and, and we have three sport athletes. So I'm not sure I have that much time to sit there and do that. You know, I still, yeah, we get them year round, but not that much time, you know? Right. <laughs> Sorry. No, no worries coach. Um, All right. Hold on. Got to close this. Yeah. There we go. My wife's calling. She just, <laughs> I'll call her back in a couple minutes. She's, she's took my, my daughter graduated from eighth grade. So they went to New York for um, some, a weekend. So it'll be fun. Oh, that's dangerous to ignore the wife call. It's dangerous. Yeah, it is. It's dangerous. She'll know that I'm on, uh, she, she'll know that I'm on a, a, a podcast. So she'll be good. I got you. Right. Um, do you, uh, how many more questions do you want me to ask? Oh, I, as many as you, I, I, you're, you're my last one for the night. So okay. Okay. You, you, you find it. I'm going to text her back and say, um, you, you find it. I'll text her back. Okay. No worries. I feel bad. You're sitting there sweating. You must've run in from practice. Oh yeah. I, I had a full on sprint coming down here. But, <laughs> yeah. I'm good now. I'm in the AC. So, and it's been really mild here. It's only in the nineties. So, Oh God. Yeah, it's warm today in Wisconsin. It's like 80 today. It's, so it's warm. <laughs> um, so, uh, my next question is transition defense. Um, uh, you know, I, I was just curious on how you guys do it. Um, you know, I heard, uh, you know, I always have a safety, you know, build a wall, stop the ball. Um, but I also had read some stuff on, okay, they designate certain guys to always get back, and these certain guys always rebound. And versus where you're kind of just playing free and, okay, if I'm backside, yeah, I'm going to go after the board. If I'm on the top, I'm going to get back. You know what, what do you mean? feel comfortable with? Well, we had always done kind of the natural, okay, if I'm on the top, you're always getting back versus, you know, if I'm on the backside, go after the board. But I kind of thought it was an interesting idea to send the kids who are good rebounders after the ball and then the kids that I can't get the rebound, even if they are down there, hey, you're a safety. Sprint back, you know. And I like of- this. I like the second one better. That's the one I've tended to do. Okay. And then we get back and, you know, I'm Game of Thrones, so don't talk about it. I've, I'm not on season seven. Yet. But anyway. <laughs> <Okay>. all, but- <laughs> it's been, so, but anyway, we talk about building the wall. No one, no one comes over the wall kind of thing. And so, so here's what we do. We go back and protect the paint, and then we run you off the three at that point. So we're not, we're, we're not going to let you have a three in transition. So we go back, we protect, and then we run off. Um, so that's kind of developed over time. We didn't used to do that before the three became what it is. Um, but I, I think you're right. I think there's always a couple guys that – I mean, my point guard this coming year will never get an offensive rebound, ever. So there's no reason for him to go to the boards. So that's why I like that theory of, like, you usually have a couple guys that that's their bread and butter. Go get it. Go yeah, get it. Yeah, absolutely. And then the rest of you just get back and protect. Right. And then you got to just make sure those guys are going to the glass that, you know, um, 
it just, it just depends. I'm a firm believer if you get an offensive rebound, I've said this before, yeah. that's your ball and your shot. Yeah, I like that a lot. And it's like, man, they get like – they start drooling because right. very, if you take a bad shot, I'm going to yank your ass so fast. <laughs> like right. if it's not one that's, that I think is a good shot for you, you're coming out. But if they do that on an offensive rebound, I don't care. Um, <laughs> so – and they right. know that and they like love that. So – yeah, I I would go with your gut and do the second one. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a little foreign to me, and I I everyone I talked to hadn't done that. I feel like you know. It, it, it I think it's to hard to say the top guy in the top should always be back because the guy the guy in the top might be your best offensive rebounder. Exactly. That was that was kind of when I read that it clicked, and I was like, man, I I know for a fact these two kids will go rebound, and and probably because they don't get to shoot it, and they're gonna go get it. So why well, not? And the thing is, that's their that it's like a, it's like the offensive lineman thing. You got to build like this is your thing. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is your your you, role. You're amazing at it. You're good, and they start right. You pump out. them up like you know. They, there's no glory in the offensive line. Yeah. But you got to pump them up every day because someone's got to block. You know. <laughs> right. So. It's the same thing with those guys. It's like, you're the best offensive rebounder I've ever seen. Just go clean up, you know. <laughs> right. And then you won't feel as bad about the bad three-point shots, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my next question leading right into that is, how structured is your transition offense? Because, I mean, we basically just fill lanes and play basketball, and we work on it every day. Yep. But I've seen some really structured stuff. I, I don't like it. My, I, I, my assistant, who's now the, my athletic director – years he spent years trying to f convince me to run a number break I hated it I will never run a number break because if I was a shooter and I was on the left side I didn't want to run to the damn right side I was open right, right. so what we are doing is changing is point, point guard gets the ball no more than two dribbles and the ball's out of your hand that's okay. what we are changing it's okay because we're gonna we're working on kind of we're not gonna run the fence offense or anything like that but you know I've been doing a lot of digging on kind of spreading we're we're gonna and, and putting two guys on the same side as the ball so if the ball goes all the way to the corner the trailing guy we're we're not even we're not even flashing anybody to the paint anymore okay. we're staying five guys wide and if you're open right. shoot it let's go um, so we're changing things up a little bit this upcoming season but. We won't, yeah, wide and no flashes in the middle. Because I learned you get the ball to the wing, then someone, then the first big flashes to the paint, the next one's high. It clogs things up. Okay. So right. we're and going we're used to it being empty anyway because we run read and react. We're five out. So. Right. So I don't know why I was doing that for the last couple of years. It's just dumb, I guess. Um, so now we're just staying, every, we're, we're saying first guys are going to the corners, next guys are following on the same side. Boom, 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 let's go. And that, that what it allows, what I've seen um, on tape I've watched, is that um, it le allows them to dribble penetrate. Right. Allow, and, then, and then we work on dribble penetrate, they stop you, poof, poof, kick. You know, um, I was yelling in the end. Anyway, yeah. Right. Mean react, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if I get a rebound, what do you tell me? Do I, do I turn and pivot and look up? The court you first. look up. You look. You look. Right. If someone's I, I'm open, not looking for my point guard. I'm looking to kick that thing up right away. Yep. yep. Okay. And usually my I – mean, I don't even necessarily – if we're only taking two dribbles, I don't even – it doesn't necessarily have to be my point guard. It's going to be the – I mean, I've got a young point guard coming up that's mm -hmm. going to make some mistakes and have to sit next to me. So I'm already thinking about how am I going to do it when I don't have a point guard on the court, and this is how I'm going to do it. It's like I have other guards that can take one or two dribbles against the athletes right. we play against. They're not going to take 25 dribbles, but they can do one, two, boom, up, you know, get rid of it. Um, so I think that can – and what that does is it counters teams to be able to pressure you. Do you do you ever have the point guard, like if I say, like we had done this recently, okay, if I get a rebound, everyone go except for the point guard. You know, he's looking to get the outlet or come back to the ball. That's he, the I, He's always coming back. I'm just saying he might not get it. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I always want him coming back, and I always want him to have the ball. But if right. he can't get it, yeah. and there's someone else already up the court open, throw it. Right. That should be first look is up the court. Second right. look back to my point guard. Yes. Oh. Because okay. – and, and and to be honest with you, I have a point guard that's like going to be as fast as – I don't know, Flash. I don't even know who's – Dash from uh, the 
you got to, you, your kid's too young at this point, but Dash from The Incredibles, somebody like that is like, poof, it's going to be crazy. Um, so I got to slow him down actually a little bit. Okay. I got you. Um, well, I already asked that question. Um, what about, uh, I've First never. First of all, been- before we ask this, who's 12 behind you? Oh, oh, that's, uh, that's just an old all-star jersey from oh. when I played way back when. So okay. uh, I guess right. it was like 10 years ago. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm in my coaching office. So I actually have a bunch of random stuff hanging up. But, okay, uh, I thought it was like, God, some, who's 12? Like, no, 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 no one, no one famous or anything <laughs> like that. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so did you have, I think, I think actually you used to have it on Schoology, but it was specifically how you teach your, your pick and roll because I've never been big into the pick and roll. But I've also noticed, being a good defensive coach, you know, like we identify now middle screen versus side screen versus step up. And I'm like, gosh, dang, I'm spending a lot of time coaching defense. We should really, this has to be a part of our offense in some way. You yeah. And I don't run into it much anymore. Okay. The and pick why, and roll. Why, why, why is that? Oh, Cause everyone's doing it. Okay. I feel like we have to do it enough that we can rep it against our defense. That's yeah, all. And I think that's a good idea. Um, because to be honest with you, when most people set a pick and roll, you're bringing a defender to the ball, and I'm doubling you. Sure. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we then had, we had blitzed everything the last couple of years because I actually heard you talking about that. And, did, and, it did, and, and, and high school kids don't adjust to it, do they? No. 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 It, it worked amazing. I mean, especially JV level teams would just quit ball screen. I mean, it would be oh, gone. That's oh all yeah. They, they, they crap their pants because now don't get me wrong. The good ones like oh you're gonna ball screen. For, oh I'm I'm off because I'm gonna head I'm gonna headsy. I'm gonna go around. But 97% of the kids can't do that. Yeah. Um, so, so you were asking how we work on ball screening? Yeah, uh, I mean, um, exactly. So that kind of is where this comes from because when we would double, uh, let's say, a side ball screen, yep. right, we would have trouble with that rotation all the way over there. Or they would pop and hit a three. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, that side, so now, now we determine the difference between side, middle, flat, but – as I'm going over, I'm like, man, I am terrible at teaching the pick and roll. I know right. nothing about it. We re- we didn't run any pick and roll last year. None. Right. So do I'm you? So to... so the way the way I do it is I we play a lot of two small sided games. We do a lot of two two on two, three on three. Okay. And the only way they can score is off of. So if I'm working on, let's say I'm working on our flare cuts, the only way they can score, and this is this is a little bit of a um, reward for them. We've done something they don't like. And then we come back and we say, all right, we're going to play. They think they're playing a game. <laughs> so, all right, well, we're going to break up into groups of two and we're going to work on um, flare screens. And you can only score on a flare. That's it. So, so they, they keep running it over and over. And they, they're playing, so they think it's fun. And then I put coaches at each of the baskets. And, right. we, and we'll stop it and go, whoa, that, that flare, here's how you didn't read that. Try right. it again. So do you do that with all your offensive actions? Um, I do. I do. Okay. So I'm giving them a little reward, and I, but they can only – and it's like – and it's hard to score. When the only thing you can do is score in a slip, you're not going to score very much. But once in a while, they'll score, and they think they're playing, and, oh, you, you won that one. You get to go. They don't know any better. Um, right. So they're working on it. And then the key is you got to just have coaches at the basket watching. Otherwise, they're just playing. And then we'll stop it and go, whoa, that – you know look what he did on this ball screen or how do you set this ball screen? You didn't get a, a butt to the bat, but whatever it is. Um, right. So that, I, and, and depending on the, on the, how much time I have, I like two on two, but I'll do three on three, depending on, you know, if I have two, two of my assistants there, I can do that easy. And then we can watch the six kids at the basket. Um, so that's the way I teach it. I'm sure there's better ways than doing that, but um, it's a great way of kind of, because I, you got to If you do it within the five on five, it's just so hard. Right. Do you do you have like the specific? So you know, uh, down to how I stand, how I set the screen, how you know, coming off his shoulder, opening him up, the reads off of that. You know, do you have do you have set rules? How you coach that? I don't have set rules on it. I don't have set rules on it. I do break it down like the first two or three weeks of practice. I will break down. You know, here's how you set the screen. Here's how we want it you know, how the contact is, but I don't get, because in the heat of the battle, I'm sure I'm more worried about their footwork than the actual contact of the screen. You know, where do we want, where and how do we want the screen set is basically what I talk about. Um, Because the movements are so much different. If they're getting their feet in the right spot, 
then we tend to be okay. Um, but I don't do a progression of, you know, you know, no, I don't do that. You have rules for the roller or anything like that? Um, you know what? We, I, how many times do you get a pass to the roller? <laughs> well, I don't run a lot of pick and roll. So okay. I, I just assume I was really bad at coaching it. That's No, we don't get many to be honest with you, it's okay. twofold in the sense, if you've got a big and a legit big, like I had Chris who's playing at Dartmouth, he was a legit big, we could run it and he could throw it to him. Cause his vertical was like 38 right. inches. Like, right. throw it up the the normal kid at that, the, the pass is hard. <laughs> and then the roll is really hard. So we roll and then we'll pop back up. We'll roll okay. and then we'll rescreen if we don't get it. Gotcha. Um, so we'll look at that, but uh, no, I don't have specific, it's similar to the read and react in the sense that when it, when, when someone that's defending me turns their head, it's an automatic flash to the basket. It's kind of the same on the screen. You have to read if they're cheating on that screen, that slip, if they're reading on that flare, you know, that we will break that down. We do that on tape more than we do it on the court. Okay. Yeah. Um, that would, that would be what I was looking for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We do it more on the, on tape than say, okay, look. And we do that a lot with the read and react. Like, look, this kid turned his head. If you would have flashed, you'd have gotten a layup. Yeah. So you got to watch that. It's the same when you're coming to set that screen. Well, how how are they reacting? Are they talking? Well, what can you got to read? What it's similar. I tell them it's like the read and react and offense. Boom. What are you gonna do? You have to do. You have to counter them because they know what you want to do, and you're. Uh, they don't know what you want to do. You know they, what kind of screen you're gonna set, kind of thing. Okay. So tape, I think, is a really good one on that. Um, oh. I need to get better, to be honest with you. This is one of my weaknesses. I need to probably break that stuff down a little bit more into the part. Um, it's on actually my list in my little black book. Where's my little black book? It's, on my, it's in my little black book of one of the things that I really need to get better on teaching screening um, and breaking it down. So that okay. would be coming, but I definitely need to, it, it's hard. And I've looked out there. There's not a lot of stuff out there on it. Yeah. You know what there's, I mean? Uh, I, I, uh, I don't want to pay for it cause we don't do enough ball screen stuff, but I might end up. Uh, no, but I, I haven't found anything. Shit. Right. I'll buy it. If you find it, I haven't found anything that breaks it down into that minute little, I yeah. mean, yeah, you tell me I'll buy it and I'll help you. <laughs> Trust me. You I mean, I've seen it. the, I've seen the continuity, you know, Gonzaga stuff. I've seen that, but right. there's, not, there's not this fine detail. It's just that there isn't the fine detail. And that's what I got. I got to do some digging. So that's, that'll be my summer. I'll have to do that. Okay. And then uh, with the read and react, here's interesting. Do you ever have trouble if you find a high pressure team, man to man, do you ever have trouble getting into your read and react? Cause they're taking away the first pass everywhere. They're up on the line and it's just, it turns into automatic cut through and really, it just turns into a one-on-one -on -one with your point guard. And we dribble and we'll dribble enter, and he'll just we'll just tell him to go to a side, and that might be where you want a ball screen. Okay. Will you? Would you do just hand off? Will you do? Yeah. A dribble hand off is hand off is great if they're giving you that hard pressure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, what if they double that hard handoff? I mean, then, we we do see a hard pressure teams, and since they're already up there, they'll just double that handoff. Yeah. Then you pop. You, you'll the pop will be open. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The okay. pop will be wide open right um slip would be open too probably but if, if, is it that is it's that so if you got, if you're five out and they're pressuring that somebody's going to be open well you know basically what happened is you know they're so good athletically that uh they would be it just turns into a one-on-one -on -one, yep you know, so so what we do sometimes that happens to us too so we'll actually we'll actually do a scissor we'll we'll have a call that we're getting pressure, so much pressure in the wing that we'll actually do like a scissor cut where people will screen for each other. We'll leave the read and react for a not a possession, but just to get into it. Just, just to get start into it. it. Just to start yep. it. Just okay. to start it. Right. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll maybe even start double low. We've started double low block and scissored or curled just to give them a different look because they're they're they've been practicing in our read and react, and all of a sudden we're throwing something different at them. Yep. They don't like it. Yeah. Okay. Do that, and it would be really good. Okay. Well, all right, Coach, that's all, that's all I really have for today. We got through it actually pretty that, quick. That, so. No problem. And, and I'm at 12% on my, on my computer, so this is good. <laughs> I was, like, freaking out. It's like, oh, crap, I'm going to have to go get my, no, go get my no charging worries. cord. All right, we'll talk again, and, I, and I'll, I'm going to work on that screening stuff, and you and I will talk.
Okay, and then uh, can you send me the uh, zone offense? Yep. Stuff too? Send me send me an email. It'll be in my inbox, and I'll do it. I'll do it right away tomorrow morning. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Yep. Talk to you soon. See ya. Right, Bye. Hey, coach. So glad you enjoyed that video. Let me know how I can help. Um, click up above or down below. Find out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. Uh, there's a 14 day free trial as we speak. Not sure how long that will last. Um, one stop shopping for basketball coaches. So go over and check it out. I've been there. I know what you're going through. Won lots of championships, won lots of rings. Um, let me know how I can help you become a better basketball coach.